Greetings Storm Aetor here, I'm the Lord Bones, I am Mo, another perspective. Another perspective is a puzzle platform with a story running in the background. It was released on Steam on the 9th of August 2014 as by a company called Sean JS. Okay, firstly let's look at this as a PC application. So firstly all this has been run only with a keyboard and not with a mouse. Let's hop into the options menu. Now I think the game is upscaling up from 1368 by 768 which is the sort of laptop resolution. I don't exactly know, but I'm pretty sure, judging by the graphics, so all you get is full screen on and off, light and shadows, which is as far as it goes for graphics, and music on or off. I have no idea what this option does, and I'm pretty sure that just puts a timer on this speedrunner timer. I have no idea what it does, and it should really tell me what it does, because I'm not going to turn it on otherwise. Now, you notice there are no rebalable keys, and so music on or off is all you get as well, which is not exactly the best in the world, and I prefer at least to have some sort of bar. Although you don't have sound effects, so you can just turn this down in Windows itself. Okay, so the game has basically two modes. It has the main mode, which is a game about you there, and then it has this mystery mode over here. Now, this mystery mode over here I've only played 24 minutes on, because I got stuck on one particular level and I'll show you this level right now and why I actually got stuck on it and didn't continue. It says this level is impossible, make no attempt to solve it. I have tried this level a million times, well, probably not a million times, but a lot and it doesn't seem to have any sort of solution for me to get to that key up there, as you can see. And you'll, this will probably make more sense if you actually end up playing the game. So I'm going to hop out of this now and start a new game. I'm going to start from the beginning because the storyline actually links into practically all the mechanics. So I'm going to show you the first five minutes or so of the actual game. So, if you ever see my video or have just played Freedom Fall, I think it's called, this is very much like that where the text is on the background and that's meant to be some way for the game to communicate a story to you. Now, the story itself seems to be this character down here having a crisis, an identity crisis of some description. And some of the mechanics of this game, well, obviously it's a puzzle platformer, but some of the mechanics of the game are actually inspired by, I'm going to say, the swapper, if you've ever seen that game, where in which you can swap between people, as you saw just in the mystery mode. Now, this does actually work really well, to be perfectly honest with you. I, I am not against any... Uh, the game maker taking mechanics from other games if they implement it very well, which in this game actually does to be fair for the arse with you, because each individual person has its own identity crisis during the course of the entire thing. And this story continues on and gets quite in depth into the actual idea of this person here I'm controlling actually having some sort of mind separate from the player. So as for just general mechanics here, it's pretty simple to be honest with you. You only ever really deal with a jump, a run, and a switching between players, which you saw in the mystery mode. That's basically all the mechanics, I think. And the idea is, is to get the keys. Now, occasionally you do get blocks, which actually block or I'll either disappear or appear when, it, when a key is picked up. So sometimes you have to do things in particular order. Puzzles, quite nice. To be honest with you, I mean, I never got to a situ I never got to a situation where in which I left the game because I was too angry or too bemused by the puzzle. It was very, very simple to be honest with you. However, the mystery ones, although I didn't ever leave my seat or whatever, they are actually quite hard. To be honest with you, so this here is where I can actually switch between the plays and shift. Now, I know I said there's no rebindable keys before, which there actually aren't. But the thing is is that, personally speaking, how do I do this now? Oh wait, everyone's ready. Personally speaking, if just had, let's say, left and right, and maybe, yeah, left, left and right in general, I won't be too bothered about the no rebound of the keys, but the shift has another key, and there's space. So to be perfectly honest with you, I'm not exactly 100% certain I am happy with this. The, the no rebindable keys part, I think that is. Because it means you can never play this with a gamepad. Although I'd not actually try plugging one in, but that would be even worse because it wouldn't even tell you the controls for that either. So, one mechanic of all of this, by the way, if you notice, is you can stand on the other person's head that you've actually swapped into. Or, I should really stop using the word swap to be the eyes with you. Additionally, by the way, when things go black and white, they actually freeze in time. So here and now I can just jump up and then use this, uh, my old person, as a ledge to get up. 
And also, oh, I forget, stuck as well. That there, we just showed you then. That, that could just be, just give us to, to be rebound. Even if the option only appears after it's been done once. Save it in the text file, give us that option. It's annoying. Now, I think that's practically the, all the game I really need to actually show you. I mean, I do like this game quite a lot because it actually is really enjoyable. And all the puzzles are really quite something, personally. It's very, very well put together. I mean, it is upscaled from... I, I think it's upscaled from a lot of resolution. It doesn't look perfect in 920 by 1080 p but it's a very good game. And for the price, if you're honest with you, you're going to get about just over an hour's gameplay. So personally, I'd say it's worth picking up on a sale, firstly. And it's actually worth your time for the hour or so. And there probably is... I, I imagine another hour's worth in the extra puzzles if I get past the impossible level. So, if I was to recommend, I, I can easily recommend this game because, oh bug it, I messed that one up. I can easily recommend this game because it is actually really enjoyable and really quite zen-like to actually play the actual game. Oh, I'll do it again. Yes, don't I, I messed this up again. I'm going to do this one puzzle and then I'm going to finish up, shall I? So on this puzzle here, you've got, you've got to do something which you have to do quite a lot. And it's a little bit difficult when you try to commentate, but you see this them blue blocks down there, they will disappear in a second. So I have to make sure this other guy down here is in a beneficial place for me. So like there. So when I get this key, he'll freeze in place and I can jump across. And it's mechanics like that which are very, very pleasing to me personally in this game. And the soundtrack is basically the same by the way, if you ever noticed, all the way through this thing. I don't I think there may be two tracks, maybe, because towards the end it sort of perks up a little bit because of certain things inside the story. But other than that, you basically listen to the entire soundtrack of this, this game. Not a bad thing, I mean, it's, what, four quid? So, I like it personally. Okay, so let's finish this thing, this, this thing up, shall we? Another perspective, a surprisingly zen like it contains an interesting set of mechanics. Another perspective is on Steam for £5, $6, 6 euros with 20% off for the launch sale. See you in the next one. Goodbye.